Hey, so welcome to another episode of Japan Business Time, Reiwa edition with Rochelle Kapp. And uh, we actually have a follow-up question from Quint Rankin from uh, the first episode of the last season on communication. Lots of us talking about the ritual of communication itself, but why it's even necessary. You know, like, why do Japanese do that? Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's actually, yeah, there's a, a, a good, good opportunity to, to dive deep, yes. so we're going to do that. Okay. So, Rochelle, that was a good question. You know, if people are communicating properly, why should the idea of having these nomikai for communication purposes be necessary? No, it's a good question. And I actually, what I want to start off with is I got asked kind of the mirror image question by some Japanese once. Well, why Where, don't they? Well, yeah, why? They said, how do Americans ever work together if they don't go out drinking at night? Oh, that's interesting. Yes, and I said, well, because they do that sort of communication. It would be in breaks at the beginning of meetings, just kind of casually, yeah. and you handle it during the day. And they're like, but they can do that without drinking? And I said, yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably stir the pot and say, in some states, they can even smoke funny things. <laughs> well, okay, I don't know really to get into that yet. We'll not get into that. No, do not talk about that in Japan. Do not even joke about that in Japan. Right, right exactly. That's uh, too, too complicated. But the, the, the fact that they feel like they need to drink in yes. order to yes. be a normal communicating human right, being. Right, yeah, exactly. But they, they were, but they were honestly <laughs> asking me that question. They were honestly okay. asking me that question. And, you know, part of what I think happens in Japan is there is this idea that you can say things while you're drinking alcohol that you wouldn't say otherwise. Like you kind what? of get a pass, like you get a pass for like saying things that are honest, like oh, you know, I, I really don't like my boss or things like that. You know, you're complaining or things like that. Yeah, I, my experience isn't that so much. My mm -hmm. experience of nomikai and people opening up in nomikai, there is the old the old thing which I was told in high school during the bubble uh -huh. was that yes, that's when you can uh, tell your boss, I hate that you make me do all this overtime for you, whatever, and you can open up like that. I've, I've learned that is definitely not the case and do not do that. <laughs> uh, but what you can do is, um, I have learned that you can't really, if you say at work on the weekend I had a great time surfing or mountain climbing or hiking, uh, I've had bosses who was like, oh, you're not committed, you, why are you talking about all of these frivolous personal pursuits when you should be focused on work? And it's kind of funny, those personal sharing, actually I play the piano, actually ah. I play in a band on the weekends, it can be seen as sort of being like almost like slacking off to talk about that at work and people keep they compartmentalize and keep it close to the chest. Right, right. They don't but talk about those things. They'll yes. share those secrets that they keep maybe a little bit more. They'll open up about those other right, aspects right, of their right. lives, That's which right. is actually really right. interesting. Yeah, you know, well I feel that Japanese use those social activity times to get to know people yeah. as people. Yeah. And I always tell people that it's important for that bonding, right? Yeah. And um I always tell people, like for example, people come from the U.S. to do business in Japan. I'm like, bring small talk topics with you. Mm. Have something you can talk about. Yeah. Whatever, like your recent vacation is, or like whatever your like kid is doing right now, or whatever. Just have stuff to talk about that's light conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see the coaching in both directions there. So it's really necessary. It, it you can't share. It's like I was just saying, it's difficult to share this information in a way. People associate foreigners with like talking about all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh -huh. And Japanese will sit there and go, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> you don't say anything. Yeah, well, so how do you draw people out, right? So how do, you, how, do you, how do you have normal conversations without getting people drunk, like, in the office? Well, it's a good question. You know, actually, I have one client who was an American, and he was, he was kind of embedded in his customer, who was a big Japanese company. Yeah. And he was really struggling with, like, trying to get people to be honest with him. And he found that, like, if he went drinking with them in the evening, yeah. that they would open up. Yeah. But he didn't want to go out drinking all the time. And so he said what he started to do is he'd sit with them in a con they'd be in the con conference room is like two o'clock in the afternoon he said okay this is a bottle of beer we're drinking beer now tell me what you want to say i like that that's original yes. yes it was original i think it worked for some people better than others but it was a clever idea right yeah <laughs> i guess yeah if it's one-on-one -on -one and there's a degree of trust and built up over time um, it becomes more possible to go and have lunches with people and you know you get hey what do you really All think right, about right. this yes it's kind of, that's part of the whole memoir and the right, whole right, exactly. consensus building thing. Yeah, or they go grab some coffee and yeah. sit in the lunchroom and talk or something, yeah. And I know I've been in Japan too long because I'm also quite, I've become comfortable not sharing 
parts of my personal life either. Uh, like this, for example. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in America, this will be the first thing that people would introduce themselves. Right, 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 you know, exactly, oh, yeah. Hey, my name's Hiko, and I have a massive YouTube channel. You know, that's what people would say in their company. No, not, not <laughs> here. Uh, but yes, you can. And, and it is actually fun. It's what I find to be fun. It's like uh, opening little presents that you find out that are left there and they're mysterious. And you find oh. out these interesting things about people long after you know them. Right, right, exactly. It's kind of fun. But... It is a little bit sad that nomikais are perceived as necessary. I think that the, the whole nomikai thing, by the way, is falling away. It really used to be a mandatory, everybody does, every company does them. Right, right. And now it's much less frequent. It's much it's like, less like, frequent. Companies don't have the budget for it. And there are a lot of Japan, younger Japanese who aren't so interested in it either. That's what I yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, the budget thing is definitely there as well. It's obviously easier when the company doesn't have to pay for them. Right. But, um, yeah, young people are like, no, I actually have other things to do. Right, right, exactly. I and there are these shocked this. bosses sitting there, like, not knowing how to process this. Right, right, exactly. So, it's, so there's definitely a change in Japanese society happening, yeah. Yeah, yeah.